Well, hi there, I'm Noah Bradley, and this is Handmade House TV. On today's episode, we're gonna talk about this tiny log cabin I built for the Log Cabin Academy that's now gone. Uh, it has been moved, and that's the, that's the subject of today's video, is how it got moved, the step-by-step -step process in that. And I think you'll find that uh, perhaps entertaining, but, uh, but educational as well, and how you can move a log cabin with ease. So stay tuned. Well, all right, if you've been following along here on Handmade House TV, you know that a couple of years ago I built a small log cabin in the front yard of my current home, and I did that as part of the Log Cabin Academy course, uh, where together uh, I and anyone who has signed up for the course would build a small log cabin together. And if you, if you can build a small log cabin, you can build a large one. It's a great way to gain the skills and confidence necessary in building a full-size home for yourself. Uh, so the time has come for me to move this, that it's going to be a useful outbuilding for me. I'm thankful for the work that I put into the past. I'm thankful for the aging that the logs have gone through, how they've seasoned, how they've dried. They look better now. Uh, and I don't have to do that work now that I need a shed. All I need to do is take down and move this structure. And so one of the members of the Handmade House Guild, uh, Nick, uh, volunteered to come in and give me a hand taking it down and uh, I immediately took him up on the offer. I thought that perhaps that I would step back in the process of moving this and just be the, the cameraman to be a, perhaps a little bit of an entertainer and encourager and maybe give a, a word of advice or two to Nick as he took down the log cabin. But nonetheless, I put this log cabin up myself uh, and at the time, the, the logs themselves probably weighed anywhere between 50% to 100% more than what they weigh today. Because when I used them, they were all green logs. They were all wet. They were all full of water. Whereas now that the logs had seasoned for a couple of years, they had lost a great deal of that water weight. Uh, they would be much easier to come down. And the, the fact of the matter is that when you're taking a log cabin down, it's a whole lot easier to take one down than it is to put one up. The gravity is on your side when the logs come down. And, uh, the process of moving logs or putting a log cabin up is often one of those hindrances that stops many people from moving forward in the construction of their own home. They don't, they don't uh, know how to, how to manipulate, how to move these logs around. Uh, and uh, many people visualize that you need a crane or a forklift in order to do any moving of the logs themselves. And uh, one of the great uh, examples of taking apart a little log cabin uh, and working with small logs is that you, you learn how to move logs. Uh, you learn how to roll them, how to slide them, how to work from end to end on them, to move them an inch or two at a time. So the first log to come down off the little log cabin was the easiest one of all. It was right out front. It was small and tiny. Uh, just one to secure the top plates in place. It was easy to go up and just grab it. Uh, it's a great uh, ego booster, a motivational uh, log to take down as it uh, is light and so easy to do, but uh, but quickly you got into the uh, more challenging ones, the, the ones that ran the length of the building, and uh, the first thing that Nick did was to uh, grab a board to act as a, as a slider uh, in order to help bring the cabin down. It sure is a lot easier to bring a cabin down than it is to put one up, and um, so again, Nick is feeling his way here. He's uh, new to the site and uh, and uh, taking down the log cabin and uh, getting getting a feel for how heavy the timbers are and how the cabin might come down in the best possible way. And uh, you can see he's paying attention to both ends, uh, but not trying to carry the weight of this top plate any more than he has to, letting gravity do its thing. And uh, of course, the top plate is uh, is not near as heavy as what the the side logs are. Uh, so once it's down uh, safe and he's got a good feel for the size and heft of it, he can he can muscle that thing over and put it in the back of one of our two trucks uh, that we had to to uh, haul the log cabin away. And uh, so he, this is my truck. He gets it in the back of it and he puts it in a nice. Uh, side place uh, for ready to go and then it's on to the uh, moving the back top plate off of there 
and for this he's just got a different technique he's sliding it off of the off of the cabin there and trying to deal with all the overgrowth of my shrubbery that uh, overtook the site where I built a little log cabin and um, you can see he's muscling it down by again by sliding one end of the log and uh, not having to carry the entire weight of the log Overall, I would say that these logs have lost at least a third, if not half of their weight since I originally put the cabin up by myself uh, in the fact that uh, they were green and wet at that time and they've had a, a couple years now to season out, so they're considerably lighter. And um, so the uh, end logs are fairly manageable for one person to be able to handle them at this stage um, without too much difficulty. Uh, the full length ones that's another that's another story they're pretty they're pretty challenging I would guess the weight at uh, probably two to 250 pounds um, uh, entire in their entirety the larger logs uh, and they're probably weighed a good 300 pounds when the cab originally went up and um, I think all of this is great uh, demonstration for you in the fact that you you just take one log at a time and you uh, maneuver it uh, back and forth, trying to carefully think things out. And again, keep in mind that Nick is here. Uh, and this is not a, a staged event. Uh, uh, he's not uh, not doing several practice runs with a with a script. Uh, this is just um, uh, real life uh, uh, feeding it out as as it goes along. And uh, so there are uh, mistakes and, and things that could perhaps have done a little bit better, a little bit smoother. Uh, but nonetheless, when you're in, in reality, when you're working real time, you're, you're just trying to think things through and things can, can flop back and forth and you just you deal and adapt with, uh, with, with how things are moving at the particular time. Um, but you can see that uh, Nick's truck is backed up to this end of the cabin and how he has taken this big huge log and he has just uh, slid it right off of the cabin and uh, more or less directly into the to the back of his truck and so now nick has gone around to the back side of the cabin and uh, grabbed one of the long, heavier logs off the back there and is sliding them to the uh, boards on the front here, the, the same boards that he used to previously move the other log. do appreciate Nick's attitude. He was smiling, having a good time at the whole thing. Uh, and it was wonderful for me to be just to be the cameraman and to observe someone else and how they might interact with it. And uh, I can say that Nick did a real good job. That, that uh, it's, it's often a concern that people have uh, in moving logs, uh, that they're concerned uh, in how to do it. They're, they're overthinking things. They're uh, they have a tendency to want to rent a lot of booms and heavy equipment in order to move logs. Uh, but frequently it's just a matter of, of fussing with them, of just trying to think things through about how to move things forward uh, just a few more inches uh, by sliding them, by going from end to end, or, um, or rolling them. Um, and, and there's just a variety of ways you can just get logs to just inch forward. And, now Nick has uh, moved around to the back to the front of the cabin where the, the little doorway is is here, and he's uh, extracting the nails uh, that were holding the uh, the small logs in place. And uh, they're always a treat to move when comparison to the to the larger logs that you're dealing with that they come right off real quick. And I can say the same thing on the other end when a cabin goes up. Uh, they're often uh, fun to pick up and, and put into place. So now Nick's back, flipped back on the back side of it. And uh, these logs, uh, you know, they, they might, they're definitely short. Uh, they're, uh, they're about five feet long. Uh, but still, when you're talking a, a hardwood or uh, walnut log uh, that's 
uh, up to 16 inches wide, uh, you're, you're talking some serious heft. And uh, so you can see that um, carefully Nick just flopped it over on its side onto the slider boards. And how he's working with one end to move it a bit. And then he goes down to the other end. And obviously moving logs uh, by yourself and moving it with, with the team or with at least a helper is a whole lot easier. Uh, it was extremely hard for me just to watch and do the filming for taking down this cabin. Uh, but, um, but I wanted to really demonstrate the step-by-step -step process that, that uh, anyone uh, can, can, move a, can move a log cabin. And again, I've moved, I've moved logs myself uh, by myself and set up a log cabin by myself where the logs were uh, 18 feet in length, which is a, an average um, small log cabin um, that, uh, that many, people, many people built. And it's just a question of the, the same technique. You just uh, you, you coerce that log to go where you want it to go. A lot of times when you're putting a log cabin up, it's it's basically the same thing in reverse. Uh, people are often uh, asking me how you get a log, you know, 12 feet up in the air, and the, it's it's the same principle, and that is that you're moving it a few inches at a time, uh, and you're resting it on something in the process, or you're sliding it up a ramp, or or one end at a time. And not once in these uh, in this video will you see Nick ever pick up uh, one of these full length logs from end to end that they are just it's it's not possible they're just they're just way too heavy. This is always a challenge trying to figure out how to get a log across a door opening. And uh, you you really don't want to remove the door the door jams because they're kind of holding the little ones in place, which is sort of adding strength to the whole cabin at this stage. I can say that it's a really smart thing uh, if you've never built a log cabin before is to build a small log cabin like this, perhaps a little larger, perhaps a little smaller, uh, but something in order to learn uh, how to notch and uh, select your wood to watch how it seasons, um, to, uh, to learn how to maneuver and gain some confidence in, uh, in moving logs around. Uh, and there are just there's just uh, probably a hundred benefits to to uh, putting together a, a small log cabin uh, and learning the trade and that's uh, that was the kind of the principle of the log cabin academy course that I put together is that I built this little log cabin uh, and I encouraged everyone at home to do the same thing to carry it through uh, that you don't really want your first log cabin you build to be your dream home and that be your your last one you really want to um, you really want to uh, uh, to, to have a, to have a, a practice, a learning curve, uh, something where you can uh, work out all of the the tricks and uh, of, of putting a cabin together. You've got enough going on in building a full size home with uh, with with your plans and your building inspectors and your electricians and your plumbers. Uh, you really want to get through the trade of um, of, of being able to be a uh, gifted and talented uh, with some experience at building a log cabin 
And as in this case here, this is going to be an extremely useful building for me now. I didn't have a use for it when I built it, but I sure do now. And I'm thankful for all the effort that I put into building it. And it didn't, it didn't take long for that log to to uh, to find its way to the ground. Uh, that's not one you want to carry around very long. You do want to be real careful in taking down a log cabin that you're not. Uh, damaging the notches any at all. The, the little uh, protrusions of the dovetails uh, are tender in relationship to the uh, weight and heft of the logs. Uh, so you always want to be conscious not to, to break them off or to damage them in the, in the process of, of uh, moving it. Uh, we only had one small corner uh, chip out of it and if that happens to you, uh, you just want to make sure and save it uh, remember where it goes and then on the other end when the cabin is going up you uh, glue and screw it back into place and uh, you'll, you'll never know what was gone in the first place but it's a lot easier to save a broken off piece uh, than it is to try to recreate one uh, from from another piece of wood Nick claims that he enjoyed uh, giving me a hand on it. Uh, we both shared a lot of a lot of laughter and a lot of conversation. I think that I was probably more of a distraction to him than I should have been. I should have let him uh, focus on on what he was doing, but uh, I was doing my best to entertain him as well uh, as he was putting it up. Uh, uh, but he did a great job. There was no injuries, no splinters, no pinched fingers, no uh, no strained backs. Uh, nice rolling technique going on there. You can see that um, that uh, that the last logs that one is moving uh, is is better uh, better done than the first attempts at, at uh, trying to figure out the process. Though, and once you once you get it down, once you know what you're doing, uh, you really gain a lot of confidence, and things just kind of come together. And again, that's the importance of putting together something little there. Uh, that you 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 just you gain a lot of a lot of know-how in the process of uh, of moving the small ones, and it really comes in handy for moving the bigger ones. It really gains you a lot of confidence and well uh, that if you can move a a 10-foot log, uh, how much harder is it if it's a 12-foot log? And if it's a 12-foot log, well then you're probably pretty confident you can move a 14-foot log. And uh, and again, if you can if you can put one up six feet in the air, you can probably put one eight feet up in the air. So you gain a lot of confidence from um, from doing uh, from moving even the smallest of logs. So in just a matter of a few hours, Nick was able to totally take this log cabin down and load it into the backs of the two of our pickup trucks, and off we headed to the lake property to see how far we might get in putting it back up. I look forward to seeing you next week here on Handmade House TV where I'll share that process with you. I think you'll get a lot out of it. In the meantime, I'd like to thank five new members of the Handmade House Guild. They are Tom and Jana Howe, Charles Kreitzer, Sarah Lopardo, Mario Hutris, and Boris Nedkov. Thank you so much for joining the Guild. And if you're not a member of the Guild, you're missing out on a whole lot. Uh, we've got the brand new Bootstrap Building Academy recently added to it, and now we've just got a brand new forum site set up, an exclusive one just for Guild members where we can share our progress, our, our, learn our secrets, and, uh, and also just get encouragement from each other within the Guild. 
If you're not a member of that wonderful community, we invite you to consider joining us. You can learn all about this at handmadehouses.com, and there's a, there's a tremendous amount of other information there as well. If you haven't been there lately, uh, the site is completely rebuilt. There's, uh, there's over a thousand postings there. Uh, there's a lot of videos that you don't find here, and you can sign up for our free newsletter as well. So we look forward to seeing you over there at handmadehouses.com, and we look forward to seeing you here next week on Handmade House TV. Until then, you take care. Bye now.